Welcome back, guys. Well, we're in the deep freeze now. We've been hanging out in the minus 20s, sometimes minus 30 these days. And uh, man, it's really chilly, but time to get out and enjoy it. And you know what? New Year's is around the corner. Yeah, the new year is tomorrow. So I'm coming at you guys today with a little reflection on 2017. 2017 was a great year for the channel. Got to meet a lot of you guys, uh, make new friends, and uh, learn lots of new things. I really pushed myself this year and uh, wanted to share all that with you. And I really hope you enjoyed uh, the content this year. So without further ado, let's take a peek back at 2017. All right, so we got the fire going and uh, got some dogs there. We got some salmon, we're gonna get the steak going. And I got some jambalaya in there, basically rice with veggies. And we can add the fish or dogs to them. So it's going okay. Really difficult to get the fire going. Everything is really, really wet. So just remember um, in the winter time, you know, try to get standing dead as best as you can. We're also working with a bit of green wood here, which is super tricky. Um, but we got it going. We got the fire going and uh, we're gonna have a nice hot meal. So that's a good thing. It took a bit of time, but whatever. We're out here for an adventure. There we have it. The elusive spring peeper. If you guys can see him through there, he's got the little brown eye. He's gonna probably start to sing at some point. Well, I guess I better get my tea started here before this burns out. I forgot my little green teacup set, so I'll just use my regular pot here. And throw the tea bag in there. Oh, that can go in the fire. Just pop that on top of the hot coals and boil some tea. And this is going to just provide a little bit of extra squish to your thighs, so you're gonna just sort of tie them up here. I'm just gonna tie them at the back. You can bring them to the front if you want. Okay, I'm just gonna tie this one now. Super, there they are. There are the mucklucks. They are done. And as you can see, I have a brand new garment on. It is called an anorak. It's a wonderful piece of traditional clothing that you can wear outside as another layer to your clothing. So the anorak uh, is an excellent piece of clothing to have when you're out in the wilderness. It provides an excellent layer of warmth trapping nice warm air against your body and it's a very good windbreak. Also, this jacket uh, has been waterproof so it'll be excellent uh, for slushy wet weather. So I'm not going to use very much, just take a little bit on here. I always add more if I need it. Just that. And then I just let it spin to dry a little bit. And I'll do a few coats. I took you guys outside for a sec here just to get some natural light on it and it looks great. Thanks guys for joining me on this build of the Pine Martin nest box. Uh, it should be all of interest to everyone to conserve these beautiful creatures and enjoy them for many years to come. So I'm gonna pop this up uh, near my cabin. Well, not at the cabin. All right, so here I am with the three pours I did today. And as you can see, a lot of excess uh, aluminum, a lot of excess aluminum here on the top. And there's a little bit of a spill actually around the side. Um, so another time I'd probably pack the sand a little bit tighter, maybe use a stick to really compact it, but it may actually make a really cool kind of scene. Um, if I don't like it, I'm just going to cut off the excess pieces of aluminum. It's no big deal. So a few of them, woo, don't need that. Well, here they are a little cleaned up. This one is really neat. 
underneath, you can't appreciate it in this video, but underneath the cap here, you can see all the gills, all the detail of the mushroom is completely preserved. Moose are the largest member of the deer family and they can get up to 1300 pounds. So you can imagine that's a huge animal. Um, they're quite tall at the shoulder, especially the adults. Um, so you can envision almost a large draft horse size. I'm back at the site now and I just scared three of them away from a big tree above me. So there's a lot more in the area. I'm wondering if I can just hang around and have a first hand view of things. Whoa. They want in to feed, and now I'm kind of in their way, so I'm going to hurry up and get set up, and then we'll see what happens. So Bob, uh, in the backyard and at my cabin, we do have lots of squirrels, both mm -hmm. the uh, eastern grey squirrel and the red squirrel, mm -hmm. and they drain the feeders pretty well. So right. I'm here to talk to you too about uh, some solutions for our little uh, furry friends and how to um, you know, live with them, but just not have them drain my bird feeders. <laughs> so, um, and also we want to talk a bit about uh, different birds as well that may be draining your feeders, you know, like the grackles and starlings and things like that. And if you don't want them at your feeder, Bob has some solutions for you uh, as to how to uh, maybe deter them a bit from the feeder and attracting the birds that you wish to see. Perfect. All right. Huge thing. Squirrels. Squirrels. Squirrels are my favorite. Uh, squirrels everywhere. Nobody thinks they can stop squirrels. And as I was <laughs> mentioning, you can stop squirrels. All right. So we made it to the park and the gate's closed. So we just have to kind of walk in. I'm just going to kind of walk in and uh, just sort of check it out a little bit. Welcome back guys. Today, just out doing a little bit of fishing with a fellow YouTuber. Hello everyone. I don't know what to do. She's, I haven't been fishing in more than a year and she's just kind of refreshing my memory with this. She's so far caught two of the fish. I've caught one. Um, she's caught the perch. I've caught um, the sun sunfish, I think it's called. And she's also caught the largemouth bass. We go. There's a nice flush of them. These ones are a little bit paler, a little bit more bluish in color, but that's all right. As you can see underneath, pure white, lots of little itty bitty pores. So I'm going to harvest some of this now to take home to make some tea. So back in this part of my garden, I wanted to show you that I've got a whole bunch of this beautiful garlic mustard. Now, this is an invasive species, so um, I don't feel too bad harvesting this as a wild edible because it's everywhere all along here. So the leaves are very tasty and have a very mild garlic taste so you can put that in salads. So as I'm harvesting the chanterelles, basically I'm using a little basket here that has open sides so that when you walk through the woods that you can uh, spread the spores as you move along. My axe here. Well, there we are. Home sweet home. Here's some snowmobiles in the background. Can't even see the hill at the back of our place. And there we are. Just like we left it. All right, there's a the spam and bacon. It looks all good to go. So I'm just gonna put this uh, in a sandwich. So as you can see, I've picked up uh, my bare root stock here from Ferguson Forest Center. And it's in a brown paper bag. There's a little acorn. I don't know if you can see a little acorn there. Um, that's where they germinated from. So I've got a little twist there and just a very light little tap in there. You don't want to go too crazy with the hammer. 
because you might end up cracking your spile or worse injuring the tree you know fracturing off a bunch of the bark or something like that so as you can see my spout's not long enough so what I'm going to do is I've got some little connectors and I'm just going to actually um, I brought some other polyethylene tubing I'm going to make a little bit of an extension set to get into the pail I have no idea where my blue um, lateral line is I had a bunch of that from a few years ago when I was doing some experimenting I can't find it so we're just gonna have to make do with some of the plastic tubing that I have well I wanted to give you guys a peek at the summer garden I think it's beautiful and this year I wanted to show you what I so impressed with these foxglove came up gosh they're gorgeous sorry it's a little washed out with the sunlight there but oh these are excellent love these things I want to show you the winter wheat in the woods and man am I ever disappointed what the heck happened here I kind of wonder if something was in here because look it's all kind of trampled down like something's bedded down in it or something Whoa. Looks like I'll have just about enough for these guys and I'll just have the bigger jar to get the rest. Ah, oh, the hammock. Such a nice time of year to lay here and watch the leaves fall. Just going to sit here and read my book a little bit until uh, the sun is not as strong so I can get back out in the field and work on a few projects. Thanks guys so much for watching today. You know, if you saw a video that you liked in today's video, the links are all down below in the description box. And uh, I want to welcome all my new subscribers in the last little while. There's a lot of you. And uh, hope this video gave you a bit of a flavor of what my channel is all about. All the best to everybody in 2018. We'll see you next year. Take care.